What is the key to understanding keyframes, and why are they so powerful? Well, it's not this key. This is just a normal key. But just like this unlocks something, keyframes unlock a whole new world of creativity. When you get in a car to drive somewhere, you first plan a route, a starting point, and an ending point. Sometimes you have multiple destinations along the way. Just like driving a car, when we're animating, we need to be planning a route before we start. Today, we're going to be working with this graphic inside of Fusion. I want this keyframes text to start at the bottom of the screen, right off the screen. That's going to be point A. And then I want it to slide up to the middle of the screen, point B. Those points are going to be the keyframes. When you set a keyframe, you're pretty much telling Fusion that that control needs to be at this value at a certain time. When you're driving, there's always a length of time before you reach your destination, assuming we haven't invented teleportation by the time that you're watching this video. So in most cases, you're going to want to separate those two keyframes in time. Let's put our playhead at frame 0, and inside the text node, go to the Layout tab and bring the center point down until the keyframes text is off the screen. To lock this in as a starting point, we need to add a keyframe. To do that, click the gray diamond next to the control. When that turns orange, that means we've added a keyframe, point A. Before we move the text back to the middle of the screen, we need to go to a different frame. If we just keep doing it right on this keyframe, it's just going to overwrite the old value and not keep her position down at the bottom. So let's move to frame 35, which is going to give us that time separation. Once we're there, just type in 0.5 into the Y control. That's going to bring it back up to the center of the screen. And you'll notice that Fusion is going to automatically add in that new keyframe, which you can tell because the control just turned orange. In the case of animating a position control, it's also going to draw this line on the screen, which is going to show us the path that it's going to take. In between frame 0 and frame 35, Fusion is going to automatically calculate what that control needs to be at, so that way we get the smooth slide up animation that we have here. So anytime that this keyframe icon is orange, that means that there is a keyframe on that frame. If we move the playhead off of that, it's going to go back to gray, which means that there's not a keyframe on that frame. On the left and right, there's little arrows, and if we click those, it's going to jump to the closest keyframe on either the left or the right side. If you ever need to remove a keyframe, you can do that just by clicking on the diamond when it's orange. When you have the node selected, Fusion is also going to add little white markers on the frames that have keyframes. That way it's easy to see just from a distance which frames have those keyframes. A great part about Fusion is you can animate as many controls as you want. For the next animation, let's have it so the text starts small, but then scales up to where it is now after the first animation. So at frame 35, come back to the text tab and bring the size down to something quite a bit smaller. On frame 35, add in a keyframe, then move to frame 60 and bring this text size back up. Just like last time, it's going to automatically add in a new keyframe on the size control. And if we hit play, it's going to do the slide up animation and then calculate all the values for that size control in between those two keyframes. So now we have it so the text slides up, and once it reaches that, it'll scale up to the full size. As a final touch, we're also going to make it do a cool 360. So if we go back to frame 35, we can come to the Layout tab and add a keyframe on the Z rotation. Then on frame 60, we're going to set this to be 360 degrees, which is going to cause it to go all the way around in a circle. So when we hit play now, it's going to slide up, then scale and do a cool spin. If you want to invert the spin, just go back to frame 60 and then type negative 360 instead. So now we will have a clockwise spin animation. Let's be honest though, this looks terrible. It's really janky and feels like it's from some old infomercial. Just like your car doesn't instantly start going 60 miles an hour and instantly stop once you reach your destination, most of the time your animation shouldn't either. To change the speed of our animations, I'm going to be showing you a really easy way to do it using the spline editor. The spline editor allows us to change the speed of the animations over time. But before we do that, keyframes are really powerful and good to know, but they're not always necessary. My whip text and whip anime tool from the editor collection allow you to create simple animations like the one we made today in a fraction of the time, all without using keyframes. Editor collection comes with 20 powerful edit page tools, so if you do a lot of video editing, it's a huge time saver that easily pays for itself. Usually in just a few weeks. Learn more down at the link below. With the spline editor open, select the text node and make sure all of these boxes are checked. This is going to display time from left to right and the value of our controls from bottom to top. By default, all of the animations are going to have a linear path, which means they go the same speed the entire time. We want this straight line from point A to point B to look more like an S, which gives it a smooth motion. You can navigate around inside the spline editor with all the same controls that you would in the node graph or the viewers, and if you press Ctrl F, it's going to fit everything to view, so Ctrl F is your friend in the spline editor. If we click on one of these keyframes, a handle is going to appear, so we can move this back and forth to change the value of the control at a certain time. If we grab both of these points, we can make some sort of S shape, and that is already just going to smooth out the animation, make it look a lot more natural. Thankfully, there's an easier way to do this though, because just grabbing these handles can be really annoying to get all the values perfect. If you select all the keyframes, press F on your keyboard, that's going to flatten them all out. Right away, it's going to be a lot better, but it's still not quite enough. So if you press T on your keyboard, it's going to open up the ease controls. With this, we can change the ease in and the ease out intensities. 
So if we bring these way up, you can see the easing is going to be a lot more noticeable. Now that there's easing, there's less motion in between each of these animations, so it kind of feels boring. Let's close the spline editor and open the keyframes editor. If you hit the drop down by the text, it's going to show us each one of the controls that are animated. And then off on the right, it's again going to show us each of these keyframes. If we grab the keyframes on the rotation and the size, we can shift it left, which is going to make the animation happen sooner. So now that we have those overlapping a bit, when we play it, it's going to feel like it's one animation, instead of two animations right after each other. In the keyframes editor, we can also do stuff like copy these position keyframes. And then if we click inside of this bar, we can paste them, and now we have those same keyframes in here again. This does look weird though, because it slides up, and then it slides right back down, only to slide up again. So if we select those two end keyframes, we can press V on our keyboard, and that's going to invert those keyframes around. Let's just drag these to the end of the clip, right like so. And now when we hit play, it's going to slide up, do the cool spin animation. Once it gets to the end, the text is going to slide off the screen. If you forget any of these keyboard shortcuts that I'm telling you about, you can just right click on the keyframes and all of them will show up right here. So for example, you can flatten the keyframes and you can reverse the keyframes right there. As a final touch in the text note, go to the settings and enable motion blur. You'll have to bring the quality up so you don't see these steps and it'll make the animation look a lot more natural and smooth. Make sure to check out editor collection and editor titles linked down below. And next week, I'm coming out with a video with five tricks to bring your animations to life. So if it's out, click here to watch it. Otherwise, stay subscribed. Catch you in the next one.